What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, Boo, but make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. We love these door corners. They sell like hotcakes. I, I love these. They're small. They fit inside a desktop laser. They sell like hotcakes, but we barely bring them to the show. We don't have a good way to display them. If you have the wire racks as your displays at the craft shows, I don't know where you would hang them on a wire rack. We have the pegboard, which we have two pegs that we can put them on, but as soon as I put them on the peg, they just fall forward. I know I've broken at least five of them. We tried the old crate on a table. <laughs> but, but we only have a four foot table, so we don't have a lot of room. And, and there's no back to it, so they tip forward and <laughs> fall around, and you can only display like one style at a time. So this season, we are in the peak of craft show season. We are determined we're gonna bring some door corners and sell them at the craft show. And we gotta figure out how we're gonna do it. We got a couple of ideas. I got a really good idea that will make it versatile enough that we could display them on my table, we can display them on the wire rack, and we can put them on the pegboards. And we think it's gonna be small enough that it'll fit in your desktop laser so you can cut it if you have a desktop laser to a large laser, either way, and we're gonna use MDF. So I think, I think we got it figured out. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We're gonna need some quarter inch MDF because this is what we're gonna cut everything out of. We're gonna paint it, so we're gonna use our Foxy Hughes paints. I think we're gonna use some uh, wood graining, so we're gonna use our wood grain tool. And then we think, to step out of frame, we're gonna add some trim to it. Now, we have differing it's opinions. Not, it's not we think. <laughs> One of us thinks. <laughs> we are, we're gonna add some trim to it. One of us thinks it's gonna be too big. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, right? <laughs> and that is it. Step two, we're gonna make some test cuts. We have a design that we think is gonna work, but we need to go ahead and prototype it to make sure it's gonna work like we think it's gonna work in our heads. If you ever need to prototype something, cardboard will work. You just have to watch it. You gotta be careful. It is paper and you'll wanna make sure it doesn't catch on fire. I keep Ask a little squirt bottle full of water <laughs> by the laser and I just missed it when I see it to start to smoke. But it's a great way to test something out before spending money on wood or, or whatever products you have, acrylic, something like that. You'll Sometimes prototyping is the easiest way just to do a little test run. And we all have Amazon boxes. Yep. So we learned a lot about our actual design by making a prototype. One, I learned that the cardboard is thicker on one side than it is on the other. That's weird, but that has nothing to do with the design. <laughs> so my slots on the side, too deep. They go too deep. So I have to fix that. It seems like on one side, not the other. That's because anyway. that's because the cardboard's thicker on this side oh, that's right. than that's the right. other. That's right. We, we, yeah. But you'll see that my slot goes too low on, on the front and the thing. And what else? This this works. I think this one was a little too deep. Your, yeah, this one needed to be smaller. A little, little deep. I need to move these holes back. And I think that's it. None of my tabs really fit because I don't know what size cardboard this is. Right. But in theory, I think it's going to work. Yeah. And yes. you can put them on either side. I like it. And if I have a tall one, here, put the beach please down there. See how it sticks up? Now, if we wouldn't be able to hang those overlapping like that on our uh, wire racks, but it doesn't matter here like this, so. Oh, the other thing is we need a better top. Oh yeah, we need a better top. This one's, a, well, it's a little small. It's a little yeah. small, we're gonna go a little bit taller. On paper, it looked bigger. <laughs> Always does, doesn't it? <laughs> Step three, time to make all of our cuts. I've adjusted this front shelf, I've adjusted the slots that were too deep, and I've adjusted the backer to just make it a little more robust. <laughs> <laughs> now, none of this 
None of these slots and tabs actually fit with the cardboard. I don't know the thickness. But now it's time to actually get our slot thickness. I measured this MDF with our calipers and it's 0.25 flat, but I don't think I want my slots to be 0.25 that's gonna be super tight. While we do want it to be snug, we don't want it to be so difficult to pull apart and put together that it's going to be squeaking when you assemble yeah, it. squeaking or break it, try to hammer it apart. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've done that. And then we're gonna add a coat of paint. So a coat of paint actually adds a little bit of thickness to it. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so we're gonna have to adjust these holes, each of these holes to match the MDF. Now. He says ours is 0.25, yours might be 0.24. That's what this whole kerfing tool is all about because it's somewhere, quarter inch MDF is somewhere on this spectrum. So every time you get a new piece of MDF, you're gonna to have to measure how thick it is and then adjust your tabs and slots. These are our tabs, these are our slots to account for your thickness of MDF. So what is ours? 0.25. Yeah, ours exactly. is 0.25 exactly. Show up how you, how you measured it. So you oh, put it right in your with little... With the calipers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I can push it in here. I can push it in. Ugh. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25 on this little... It's tight. Too, too tight to put it together and take it apart on a regular basis. So I'm just going to jump down. 0.253 feels... Kind of loose, I could get it in. It feels snug and tight. It will hold on, but I can still pull it out with two fingers. And it should give us a little room for a coat of paint. So now, if it sounds daunting to adjust each one of these slots to account for your size MDF, meet me over in Lightburn. I've got a one minute tip and trick to show you how to adjust your all of your tabs and slots at one time. We have our file loaded here in Lightburn. We're gonna make sure that nothing is grouped. The first thing we're gonna do is ungroup everything. And then while everything is selected, we're gonna go up here to Tools, Resize Slots and Selection. And here you can see, we're gonna adjust our slot width and you can see that none of the slots are currently selected. So we're gonna change our old material thickness to 0.25. That's what it is. There we go. Now it recognized all of the old material thickness we want to adjust that to 0.253 and we're going to do this so that we can have room for assembly disassembly and paint and then we're just going to if everything's not there you could always adjust the tolerance and have it look for it and then hit apply and then let's just double check this one height is 0.253 and the vertical one width is 0.253 perfect while we're here, we can also adjust the tab height. So let's select everything again, go to Tools, Resize Slots and Selection, click Tab Height, and you can see it automatically recognizes all of the tab heights. In this case, we know that our MDF is 0.25. You can always adjust the tab height to 0.253 if your material was thicker. But in this case, we know it's 2.5. We're gonna leave it at 2.5, so we're good to go. Five. Now we paint. <laughs> First tee. <laughs> I think Kim wants everything to have a wood grain look. So we're gonna initially paint everything using some whack bat wood and a foam roller. Yes, I want, so it's gotta be painted. It needs a color, it could be stained. You, you might wanna stain yours, but I wanna keep ours light in color to kind of match the standards, ours is gonna hang, in theory, it's gonna hang on the pegboard standards. So I wanna kinda keep it lighter in color. Blend and then, it in, camouflage it. And and I wanna give it some sort of de decorative look. So, you know me, I love the wood grain, so I'm gonna try the wood grain tool on the sides and the tops. And then we will look into the trim. Okay, <laughs> the trim. Don't touch the trim. <laughs> I'll just die if anyone gets that reference. Now that we have a base coat of heist haze, we're gonna come back in with whack bat wood. We're gonna roll it on, and while it's still wet, 
I'm going to use this uh, wood grating tool to scrape it back off, but make it look like wood grain. It's really all in the wrist. You got to have a nice smooth pull and rock your wrist smoothly at the same time. It's pretty easy. You ready? And I think I want to use whack bat wood. I'm also contemplating white. I think maybe I should use white. No, I think the whack bat wood will look good. Um, he thinks so. I think white, but we'll see. Let's just give it a go. Now, the thing about the wood grain tool is you do want this paint wet, and this dries very quickly. So you're going to do one piece at a time and one quick coat while it's damp. Yep, he's going to go right in. I want me to hold the other end. You got yeah, it? I got it. All right. All right, what do you think? I think you've lost your technique. You did great there. That was wonderful. This was too long. You're dragging too long. What do you think? What do you think? I like it. Okay. Do you? What do you think? <laughs>to assemble we're just gonna put pin it all together it's uh no glue or anything we just uh, this piece goes first this is, the, this is not the front this is the front why because it's a little bit shorter it's a little bit shorter and the tabs are at the top and so are the slots oh okay piece in the back. Ooh, it's a little, a little tight back here. What, somebody add too much paint? Yeah. Paint in the slot. Got a dirty slot. <laughs> on something because it's like not moving at all. There we go. Get 
that's design it. needs to come up. Oh, they gotta go at the same time. Well, green got thick. And now that's how. There we go. Oh, the shelves. I totally forgot about the shelves. Short shelf goes up front. And then the other two shelves should be the same size. tell it's a little tall oh Oak. yeah there we go all right Ooh. so that's what we got so far all right, looking pretty good step seven and now we have the accents we're gonna cut this trim to see if we're actually gonna put it on i am horrible at making miter cuts yeah he is very uh He's very much Feeling not. salty right now. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I'm going to mess it up. Let's just give her a go. We have our trim pieces. We haven't attached them yet because we're at odds. We, well, we're you just you can help us vote. Yeah, you vote. Honestly. Let us know. So here it is with the door corners added, both sides, no trim. And then here it is with the trim. I put so, my trim here. Uh-huh. Right, put hold oh, on. I can hold on. behind. Me. Yeah, yeah, I see. There you go. <laughs> it's hard to see from this side. Okay. There. So that is option. Option A is no trim. Option B with trim. And then option C, Sarah, which was the same thing Garrett said. He goes, now you can't see the water. So we had the kids help vote too. Said you could always put it up here on the trim. And then Tanner said, well, it'll fall off. And then I, and then she said, what if you added like a command strip? So I have a piece of trim for the front too. Oh, we could just... always command strip it on the thing. Like here's the example and you take the ones from behind it. Mm -hmm. That's what like she that. was suggesting. That Not, way. Then I like the trim, otherwise, I don't think we need the trim. Here, put this one on the trim. I wanted to show that one I on the trim. I feel like the trim might be confusing. Here, get rid of this guy then. Well, I gotta put something on the bottom. See, I don't Whoa. like, I don't really love the way that looks. With, right here, like what am I doing with this open space? But if you actually have the door corners on. All right, so what do you think? Trim, no trim on top of the trim, behind the trim. Yeah, this is what, yeah. They could just stack I, I here. I still kind of vote, I still kind of vote no trim. So I need your, I need your opinion. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and mount them and see if that works. Oh yeah, let's see if mounting it to the structures work. <laughs> and I'm a little concerned about the weight, so I haven't, we haven't tried this. So we'll put them this up. This is real time. <laughs> All right, I'll take my trim off. I have some reusable zip ties that we're gonna use to mount this to the racks. Remember, we put these little holes on the side and I'm hoping this is going to work well to hold this onto the display rack. So this is the metal disp display rack like most of us started with. I'm gonna need a third one, right? Well, let's just start with the middle one to get it up on there. Okay. And then, uh, right about here. Where are you going? 
I don't know. How that's let's, let's set it on a, yeah, like right here. Okay. All right, it's on there. It's okay. All right, let's load some stuff. Okay, look. There's no feet on the rack. It's just uh, it's at a, it's a it's 90, at a 90. Yeah. yeah, it's holding. It's a and little think, heavy, but I think once you zip tie this, I mean, we typically zip tie this to the tent poles. Yep. So it would need to be, you wouldn't want to mount this in the middle of your booth, but if you mounted it near one of the I tent think poles. If you made a square out of these racks and put them all around it, mm -hmm. it would totally balance out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm happy with it. All right. Now, I'm not sure it's going to work for these. These are just not quite as... No, I was going to do the same thing. I was okay. going to put them through the holes in the sides. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side, I was going to put a peg on the other side of the hole and just wrap it around the peg and tie it. All right, let's so it give, goes let's, through the hole. Let's give it a try, all right? Peg. Can we try it? Sure. So we could turn it around yeah, and kind of show. Turn it around. Now, there you go. Hopefully, you can see these are just little pegs. I would probably use a longer peg. I might actually put a notch in it so that it wouldn't slide out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although it's in there pretty good, I think it'd be okay. So all right, you want to try putting some stuff on it? No feet, but we'll be able to tell if it will lean. Okay, I'm gonna hold it down here now. It's not too bad. It's not. It's not that heavy. It's not too bad. I I'm mean, a little shaky, but yeah, it seems a little wobbly. If anyone tries to take one well, off, well, it's not on feet. There's no feet. <laughs> but even still, I think the top might be a little wobbly. I mean, I, we'll have to test this out at a yeah. craft show and we see how it goes. We can zip tie it to the top of the tent too, just like the wire racks. That's for an outdoor show and then for an indoor show, uh, we could either bring the metal or we'll just put it on a table. So that's the great yeah. thing is it's supposed to be it versatile so that you can either display it on your table or you can display it on your rack. Ooh. Oh my God, I thought I saw it falling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I saw, but I swear it was coming forward. <laughs> well, we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you and next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. That is the best way to support this channel. And I can't balance this one right now because it's stuck on uh, the backer, but I made a stunt double. This one was before you... Added the holes on the side. Yes. After we started, Kim's like, you know what? It needs holes. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> there. And we want to make sure that you can make it with your desktop laser. And we're going to make it out of MDF. Two, <laughs> two hands. <laughs> and we're going to use glue. And <laughs> we're going to use paint. I'll try again, ready? So let's go figure this thing out. What was that?